Come on. Come on, girls. Happy good. Good morning, everyone. So I'm just getting the cows in. It's a little bit hard to see. It's a bit dark, and it has just gone six o'clock, and it's actually quite crazy how dark it is now. It's gotten dark in the mornings quite quickly. So we are in February now, which is our last month of summer. Although well, sun's up now, it's actually quite good to see because there hasn't been a lot of it over the last week. It's sort of every day we've just got a little bit of rain, and it's been quite cloudy. It is a little bit overcast today, but. It's dry and there's no wind, so it is beautiful. That can's about done. That's better. I've got two cows going about lunchtime. That's one of them there. She was actually in Dad's herd, but he put her in here, and then I'm going to draft her out. Here's the other one here, number 81. Sort of speaks for itself, she is only a two year old but she's just really not producing, look there's really not much there in the udder. She was in the other herd too but dad caught her a couple of weeks ago suckling off another cow so we just put her in here to sort of stop it. We could have put a nose ring in but we sort of did it this way this time and she's sort of just drying herself off so she wasn't really producing that well beforehand but now it's pretty obvious like she has to go. Now in my last row I've got two, four, six, eight, nine. Take away the two that are going, so that'll be seven. So I'm just wondering how many cows you got in the last row now? I have 13 cows. Plus the 13 minus that one. No. So you got 13 including that one, so now I'll be down to 12. 12 plus the seven in here would be 19. So that means I've got more than a row. So what we need to do is hold three cows. Or maybe we'll just leave it at the moment. So that's not going to quite work out how I was thinking. I was sort of planning that we'd pull Dad's eighth row, which is only sort of milking half row, like he said, 12 cows. Pull that out and put them into my herd. I'd still milking 12. He'd just mil be milking like a row less. And I'd just pull all the empties out of his herd, put them in here. But I don't really want to go and kill three more cows right at the moment, like maybe we will over the next month, but I don't have any others at the moment, so we'll just keep it how it is for the meantime. I'll just leave them in here for a few hours. The truck's not coming till, he said sort of, Lunchtime midday, so when it gets a little bit closer, I'll, I'll put them in the yard up there. Come on, girls. Come on. Just started topping in front of the girls again. This paddock just needed a little bit of a clean up. Looked exactly like that and I'm gonna to top that. That's where they're going in tomorrow and the next day. It does take them a little while to get used to it. Look, they're going around eating all the short stuff instead of the top grass. Great timing, the truck's just turned up. Just gone 11 on, it's actually just coming to get them in. So this is perfect timing.
up you go. Push him up. Push him up. It's actually quite cool, that truck driver, he recognised me because he was a builder and while he was doing his building apprenticeship, he did a little bit of work out here and for mum and dad as well. So he got qualified and then he said he wanted a bit of a change so he went truck driver. He's been doing it for a little while now and he said he absolutely loves it. So it is pretty cool to hear but he is taking those two animals, he's taking them to like a holding yard which is quite close to here. Then they're going to fill a whole unit load up, truck and trailer and then take them to the works from there. I've just drenched the calves and it's pretty cloudy today and there's a little bit of a breeze that has come up but it is seriously warm. Got the old bead going pretty good then. Just uh, real humid. But one thing that will be loving this humidity is this maze and it definitely needs a little bit more sunshine to get it going but I thought it'd be interesting to come down and compare the two crops. This is the direct drilled stuff and right next door is the maize that was strip to. It looks pretty similar sort of height wise when you compare them both but I thought I would walk into the middle, grab a cob from each and we'll sort of compare them and see if there is any difference. So I think I'm probably in far enough here and this might be a good one, it hasn't double cobbed. It's just got a single cob on it so we'll pull this off. And go and compare it. I okay, this is pretty similar. These are only single cobbed up, so we'll grab that one. So visually, do they look any different? Ooh, not really. They look pretty similar. Actually, the direct drilled one looks a tad longer. Got to try and remember which is which. Right, so this is the direct drilled cob. Here off. And this is the strip tooled one. I reckon there's quite a noticeable difference. Which I'll show you. So this is very, very interesting and it is a very small sample size, I probably need to grab a few more cobs but guess which one the direct drilled one is. It's actually the cob on the left which I would have thought would be the other way around. So i better break it open and have a little look, it's distinctively got more kernels on it doesn't it? and it looks less stressed. See how all the kernels are sort of like straight up and down, it means the plant was sort of healthy where the, this one it's sort of the kernels, I don't know, they're kind of spiral like. I think that's what it means and it sort of hasn't really filled out at the top there which is pollination. We'll break it in half and we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 round which is pretty standard, you'd hope for a few more and this one, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, so that's what they should look like. That's a pretty good cob. And after the sort of wet season we've had, it's probably definitely had an impact on it. And I'm guessing we're probably down quite a lot on sunshine hours too, which probably has got a, an effect as well. But it is very interesting, like I'm sure I didn't get them mixed up. It's, it's, you would say after that cob, and I know I did say it's a very small sample size, I only just grabbed one, but I tried to get one that was sort of similar. You would have to say that the direct drilled cob is better. However, just by eye, I reckon the strip tilled maize has probably got like a better average over the whole lot, whereas this one, it just seemed a little bit thinner on the outside, so. I don't know, it'd be interesting to put it over a way bridge. But I'm not going to do that because it's just like another expense and we don't really need to when it's on farm. But it would be pretty interesting to see the result. The chopper does have its own sort of reader, which I could probably go off. I just don't know how accurate they are. Maybe I could get, I could get it tested for like dry matter and see if there's a difference that way or anything. But for a big plant like this, it is pretty amazing because half of the dry matter that comes from it is tied up in the cob here so the cob is very important 
I'm, yeah, I'm still amazed. <laughs> that actually blew me away. I probably could do that again and probably randomly pick two cobs and it might go the other way, but I don't know. It was just an interesting thing I thought I'd try. Look at all this prickly pear. I need to come and pull that out. But the reason I thought I'd come over here as well is because the soil won't change much. The soil will be exactly the same between the two crops, so I can sort of eliminate that aspect out of my little trial. Typically, the maize is usually harvested from about mid-February to very, very early March. And this year, I think it's just going to hold on just that little bit longer. It probably won't be ready till sort of mid-March, maybe. And it's just been so wet. There's still heaps of moisture in the ground, it's not drying out, but it was also planted that little bit later too, which is all to do with it. We have been lacking a little bit of sunshine lately, so if we can get some nice hot days, it'll really sort of push it, get those cobs going a little bit more, and hopefully they fall out, especially the ones that are sort of double cobbing up. It's a good year for them potentially to be quite a good plant. But like I said a little bit earlier on, we have been lacking probably a little bit of sunshine hours for this, which is good, it's making the grass grow all this rain, but cob growth is probably lacking so if we could get some nice hot days and we are in February now so I've, <laughs> the chances of that are pretty high it should sort of promote good growth in these plants that are sort of double cobbing up I don't know the ones that I pulled off before certainly they seem probably on the smaller side but I don't know all in all it's still not a real bad crop there's some people around that got hit real bad with the flood so I think it's looking all right but with the humidity you get the chance of thunder showers and it looks like someone's getting hit through there that looks quite heavy. I have actually got quite a bit of maize silage left, which is a good thing. And this bunker has got 10 of these panels. So I think I'm up to seven. One, two, three, five, six. So almost finishing the seventh one. I could start increasing their maize intake. I reckon there's probably about 9,000 kilos of dry matter per panel. So three left. And maybe the end one doesn't have quite that because it's sort of sloping down. So say about 25,000 kilos at probably 45 days which would take me through till the middle of March it's about three kilos a cow per day although I think we're gonna have quite a bit of grass soon whether I feed them a little bit more try and make some more silage or sort of drop it and just feed them more grass and take some of this maize through till next year but I don't think it's going to keep very well if you have done it before let me know I guess you could take the top of it and spread the rest on the floor just before the maize is coming off although then you're letting air in it and it might mold I don't know I don't know let me know if you've done it before I'd be quite interested but I think probably the best bet would just be feed them more get rid of it if I was in the position to make more silage like it's a good thing anyway so yeah, I don't know play it by ear we'll see how it goes although it's sort of like building at the moment and it looks like that thunderstorm that was over there is sort of coming this way a little bit well well would you look at that didn't really end up coming to much, it sort of wet the ground and that was about it, but that will pretty much wrap it up for this video guys, so like always, give it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome, and apart from that, see you next time.